So uh, I was a police officer for 20 years. And in that time frame, I worked 10 years of my career in the Arctic. Wow. Yeah. So I worked with the Inuit. Um, and I, I, let's see now, I moved around quite a bit. So I did two tours and meaning that um, it's volunteer to go up there. Like you're not, um, I worked for the RCMP. So the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. And um, they don't say, okay, you're going to go live up in the Arctic for 10 years because it, it is a bit of a process because it's very isolated. Mm. Uh, all fly in posts um, or communities. And uh, so you got to be sort of ready for that, right? So usually, you know, you've got to go through psychological um, questionnaires and all kinds of stuff to make sure that this is going to be okay for you and your family. But anyway, um, all my trauma um, came from the Arctic. And um, mm. yeah, so uh, just to give you some idea, basically, I did all my work in Nunavut territory. So that we have three territories here in Canada, and they're all in the north, like north, north. And like, I was north of 60, the parallel of 60. So that's how north I was. Wow. And um, they have per capita the highest uh, rate in suicide, in domestic violence, in pretty much any kind of violence, murder, all of that stuff. Um, really serious, like uh, sexual crimes and all kinds of stuff. So, um, yeah. It, so it kind of... Doing the two tours, I did one tour, so I was there for about seven years, and I moved around three times in Nunavut territory. And then I went south again for another year, back to Ontario, and then went back north because I missed it, really. Um, and I really liked the work because it's really community-oriented work. Like, you, you, um, you're kind of living in a bubble. Mm -hmm. um, or living in a fishbowl, so to speak, but that didn't bother me really that much uh, because you're part of the community, but you're also the enforcement of of the community too. So um, you got to meet some really good people. So I met, I've got friends that I keep in touch with now um, mm -hmm. that, you know, I might have been in this community, say, in Arctic Bay for like, you know, like, I don't know, eight years ago, and I'm still really good friends with people up there. So that's where my trauma is based out of. And I think the big, the big thing about um, the type of work that I did based on uh, community work in, in with an indigenous people in isolated communities to first responsive policing in a city um, like say, Toronto, is you don't really get to know you don't get to know the people really at all that you're dealing mm -hmm. with whether they're uh, a victim or a witness or maybe they're the individual that's been arrested you don't get to know them whereas in a small community or settlement as they call them you you get to know them they could be they could be the same person could be a witness a victim a suspect all at once or you're dealing with them on mental health issues for suicidal ideation. You'd be dealing with the families. You get to know these people really well. And I think that was what I really loved about it because I really could tell that I was, I was, I was serving, but I was giving back and I was able to see the difference in people that I actually connected with. So that's pretty damn cool. You don't you don't get to you don't really get to do that as a police officer unless you're in a in a position that I was in. Mm -hmm. In saying that, the the other side is is that when things happen, like serious trauma happens in the community, um, because you know the individuals, it it kind of, it it really it really hits hard mm -hmm. because. You you know you 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 feel it as well, um, whereas you don't have that connection when you're working in like first responsive policing where you're just going from 
A, B, D, you know, you're basically, you know, just going to where you're, you're being called to go to, you deal with that call and you move on to the next one. You don't get to have that connection. Yeah. So, you know, um, yeah, so I got, I got, uh, I, I developed PTSD up there and I didn't, I had, I did actually, I did actually get traumatized when I was a kid. I was sexually assaulted when I was um, eight years old. And so mm -hmm. I already had that going into this, going into this career. And it kind of, it kind of, what is the word? It, it, it developed into, as opposed to P, uh, chronic, uh, PTSD or C, PTSD C or CPTSD, it developed mm -hmm. into what they call occupational stress injury. And I don't know if, if you're familiar with that, but it's basically uh, um, getting involved in a trauma while you're at work is what it is. So, but you're, you're, it's repetitive. So it's not something that happens just once it happens right. over and over and over again. So that's what I have. And of course, coming along with it came anxiety and depression and all that stuff. Mostly because when I finally went off work, I was experiencing um, a, a few symptoms, some significant symptoms when I was still working in the North, but I was not ready to like, I just kind of went, ah, you know what? I'm just tired. You know, I just need a break because you're, you're working quite a bit up there. You're on call. There's a oh. lot of, right? Because it's not like you can take upon a lot of uh, staff to come in and take over when something happens. That's not, that's not how it works. You're basically, you're, you're involved all the time.